What's going on traders? In today's video, I want to walk you through my thoughts on a swing trade I took last week on dollar SPG, Simon Property Group. And this was this trade, it took five days and it resulted in almost $200 for me. It was a great trade. I just want to walk you through my thought process, how I identified the trade and my thought process behind it. I'm going to put up a kind of copy of the trade from my actual trading log so there's proof and you know you can verify it. So here is that. Okay, so let's jump into the chart. I'm going to switch the SPG chart. First, it's on a daily. I'm going to just do a simple kind of basic line graph or chart. And if you take a look on it, it's a pretty pretty solid stock and a pretty kind of robust company. What they do is they're a real estate investment trust and they own a bunch of properties across the country, maybe even outside the country. And then as a shareholder, you are entitled to some of the cash flows that they get from their properties they own. What I liked, so if you if you take a look at the line chart, the basic chart, you see it's been doing pretty well over the years, kind of solid, sustained, upward momentum, upward growth, which is obviously a good sign and something you want to see when you're looking into long-term investing for growth and dividend stocks, etc. Once COVID hit and the pandemic hit in March, it had a very steep sell-off. And in the sell-off, it dropped almost 67% of its value. And that's a lot. That's very significant. And the, the reasoning behind that is that with the shutdowns and people not going out, um, there's not going to be traffic at their stores or at their properties, like sign property groups. They own a bunch of malls and shopping centers. And if everything is closed, then you know those stores aren't going to make money. And in turn, they can't pay their rent. And if they can't pay their rent, then Simon Property Group can't collect their revenue and you know can't turn a good profit. Um, so I'm going to now switch over to the candle chart. So this is a more technical term. If you haven't seen this type of outlook of a chart, I'm making another video, which I will link below in the description. So you could view that video to kind of understand what these candles are and what this advanced charting is. If you are advanced and you know what this is, perfect. We could hop into the technical analysis of it. So if you zoom in on the sell-off, it's a steep sell-off, but if you notice, it, it formed a solid base of support. And let's draw it out. It was, you know, give or take pretty much right here. Kind of dipped a little bit below some points, but uh, that's not too, you don't need to get too much into the noise and too bothered by tiny price action when you're doing swing trading and more longer term investing or, or trading. What I liked about the stock is that it kind of came down here, touched the support level, meaning buyers stepped up, rebought the stock, came back up, came down, came back up, came down, came back up, came down, came back up. And I saw this pattern. And what I want to highlight is, is you could, if you identify this, like I did, you could have, you know, seen a profit potential. And so I'm just going to draw these kind of trend lines here to indicate what I saw. Rather steep one here. Okay, so I took the trade. I'm going to zoom out so you can't see. I took the trade right here on this candle right here. Actually, it was a little bit more right here, May 22nd, this red candle. So I only saw this. So that was my eyes at that day when I purchased the stock. And my reasoning was is that, yes, there is a huge potential that this stock could tank further, that indeed the fundamentals and the financials of the stock are going to take a massive hit because of COVID. And as a result, because the company isn't can't perform financially well, the, their stock price should thus fall. And that's that's a very legitimate reason. My counter to that was that this economy, in my opinion, has been very irrational and that it's kind of been untethered to the fundamentals and the true financials of the, of the companies in the market. And, you know, you couple that with uh, optimism of vaccines, um, you know, is the is the virus statistics true and either are they underreported or overreported? Then um, you have Powell, the head of the Fed, who's pumping money into the economy and lending a lot of money, trying to stabilize and support and prop up the economy. So there's a lot of factors. And you also have the fact that many people can't get returns in other markets or in other assets, and they're putting their money into the stock market. So there's a bunch of reasonings and reasons to take a risk on a trade and to um, stomach the risk 
if you think that although the fundamentals are bad, you still might get a small pop from other people investing and being bullish on the economy. And that was my idea. And so that's the kind of macro fundamental reason why I took I put money in the stock market and I exposed myself and got exposure to the stock market. Why I went along and took a position in SPG specifically was because given the fact that I think the market will keep going up, that the market is typically a, a, like um, a tide that ride, that lifts all boats, right? If you have good market support, other large you know cap stocks will rise with it and it will also fall with it. But the stock market's moving up. Simon Property Groups, a well-respected you know blue chip company, should move up as well, especially given the fact that it sold off around, let's see, like 50-65%, which is a lot for a company like Simon Property Group, which has been around for years. So I entered on this candle this day, May 22nd, I bought 30 shares. And my reasoning was just like every other time, you know, it goes up. Okay, it comes down, hits this level, and then it got to go back up again. And that was my, and it's, it did it three times, right? It go one here, two there, one here, there you go, and there, and there. So my thought was it has to go up from here. Now, it very well could have gone down, right? And that's perfectly makes sense. In any other market conditions, I would expect it to because, you know, people can't pay their rent and thus sound property group can't do well financially. But given the market and the, uh, the reasonings I said before, I was okay and comfortable taking a risk thinking that although the financials may not be sound, this market may be and may push the stock up. And that's exactly what happened. So if you see, it started to rise a little bit. And this may not be the biggest rise, right? It looks kind of tiny, but if you do it on a percent basis, it was around a 10% move, which is very significant in a matter of five days. That's 10% gain in five days. And you really can't complain with that. So that was my swing trade on Simon Property Group and it netted me around $200. And in this market, yes, there's a bunch of opportunities, but you got to be careful. And you need to understand what you're investing in and what the risks of those investments carry. I hope you found some sort of value out of my recap on this stock trade. If you did, please leave a like so the YouTube algorithm can pick up the channel and other people could see it. Comment down below any of your thoughts or reactions to this video or if you had a similar swing trade that you want to discuss in the comments. And of course, subscribe to the channel because every subscription for me is another step on my journey to financial freedom.